Aloha and welcome today to Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. I'm Kei Aquino, your host and trustee at large in the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. However, I'm here in my private capacity today and don't represent the views of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs nor any of the administration there. Welcome today and we've just finished the 2020 elections. Boy, was that an election cycle. And I'm pleased to say that I was re-elected and thank all of you who voted for me. But in, in addition to that, we have today a trustee, a brand new one who was elected to office, Luana Alapa. And we're gonna be delighted to hear what she has to say, and get to know her. Luana, welcome to the program. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Well, always. And this is a wonderful holiday season. I see you've got your Christmas tree up already. And that was a whole nice week. week back. <laughs> You have a lot of things to celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you, you know, so much. Uh, right at the outset, what motivated you to move from private life into a public life? Uh, you were involved in business before, you were managing your own family, and then all of a sudden you decided to get into the fishbowl and go political. What was well, it that drove you into that? I, I think more than anything, it was about, um, you know, going to the second half of my life, my, my kids are all grown up, uh, my last one, my son is in college, and I'm pretty much an empty nester. And um, moving back to Molokai and my dad's property, he has five acres in Ho'olehua, it was an opportunity for me, first of all, to help make my dad's blueprints for the development of his property to become a reality. And while I was there, I've, I've uh, decided that, you know, if there's something we'd like to do for our Hawaiian people, uh, it would be something that I could give back. My father was always, always about uh, one of the most important things he, he has, uh, taught us, me and my sisters, was that one of the greatest things you could do in your lifetime is to be of service to others. And I thought this would be a wonderful way in which I could implement that and take my father's words uh, seriously and do something that I could give back to the people of Hawaii. And I decided to go for uh, the uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Molokai Trustee. And with a lot of support and a lot of prayers from every, every night, I pray about it because this is totally out of my comfort zone. But I knew that if my, my, my purpose was strictly about serving others, then I was on the right path to doing this uh, properly. So here I am, uh, gosh, seven months later, this is, it's been an amazing uh, journey. I'll tell you that much. It's just something I've, I would never dream of ever, but uh, I'm so glad that I'm able to uh, do this uh, for, for all of us, for all of Hawaii. And being a trustee, it's still like, gosh, I can't believe it happened. <laughs> so very blessed, definitely. Well, Luana, you have been serving all your life, not only your family, but your community, and you've reached out throughout the state. Why political, however? Why go into running for office and become a public office holder specifically? Well, I don't, I don't think it was, it was about uh, entering the political arena per se. It's not like I, I was growing up and I want to be in the political arena as part of my, my goals in life. No, it never was like that. Um, it just so happens that being involvement in, in an arena of this nature is tied to the political side. And if, if it's being a, a, a service to the Hawaiian people, my community, so be it. I, I have to enter this arena to be able to do such a thing as uh, becoming a trustee uh, and uh, being able to uh, uphold the, uh, uh, the uh, state of, of giving back and helping others to get to where they need to be. All of our Hawaiian people uh, are so deserving of a roof over their heads um, having the proper education, jobs, uh, uh, training, and, and so forth. There's so much that we need to do, and it, it doesn't seem like, you know, we're kind of moving back as we're trying to move forward. And this is a, another way in which I, I felt that I could give a lot more of my time, my education, the things that I have learned over the past years that I could help our, our Hawaiian community as well. So that was part of my, part of my reason in, in deciding to run for OHA. In order to gain the privilege of serving in the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, you had to mount a campaign and you had to run against a long-term political incumbent. It must have had many challenges. You did not have a political base per se. You didn't have a financial base politically. And yet you decided to run a statewide campaign. What was that like? <laughs> oh my goodness, where do I begin? Um, well, one thing for, for me per se, I'm, I'm always about doing something that is different. Being different, meaning I wasn't going to follow the typical standard where it has the certain colors you have to have and you have to do a certain way and so forth. I wanted to stand out in a way which people remember 
Remember me as a candidate. And it's not just the person Luana laugh about, but the things that I, I'm doing during this process. And it was always, always going to be about the people first. So one of the things that I did was, uh, which everyone loved, by the way, and I got to tell you a story about this. It's a, it was the pink campaign. And if you saw the pink, everybody knew that was Luana. And so the pink campaign uh, was by chance, it was, uh, we had ordered my signs, which were of the greens and blues. And when they came back, it was all bright neon pink. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the general election and we need to get these signs up. And so I felt like, well, wait a minute, rather than throw them all away, why don't we turn it into something that will be uh, viable, that I could uh, utilize this in my campaign. And I knew that the month of October was pink. And that means uh, pink awareness for breast cancer. And over the many years, I've been involved in, in helping with uh, breast cancer awareness in, in their uh, in their uh the run, the fun runs that they would have, uh, the pink tie ball and so forth. We all volunteered for that. So I thought, well, this would be a wonderful way in which we could still raise the awareness through the pink campaign. And that's why we had, you saw the pictures there, it's about the signs. We had breast cancer awareness. And then of course the pink for Luana Lapa and it just worked perfectly. And everybody, and I've had people, women especially, volunteer to be on my pink campaign because they were breast cancer uh, survivors. And I thought, wow, I was just tickled pink to have them come on board. Now, those who joined me, a lot of them, I didn't know who they were. They just wanted to be a part of my pink campaign. And so I said, perfect, just come on down and we'll give you a pink lay, a pink sign. And there you have it. And then it grew into what you're seeing in the pictures. And there's a lot more people that wanted to be involved. And so I was able to get them down there, just hand them over a sign. So very blessed that I had such a wonderful turnout of supporters, especially for the women, our breast cancer survivors. And uh, uh, quite a bunch of them were on my team as well. So I, I'm so happy that they could be a part of that. So the pink campaign was perfect. And then the next thing that we did to, again, to separate is to, it was about the uh, flyers. And I didn't want, you know, to utilize the flyers as just, um, it's a who's who and so forth. It was about having, um, it was about having, uh, just everyone in general being a part of this. I, I didn't want the celebrities and so forth. It was real people, people that wanted to be a part of my campaign and just volunteer their time by giving me their pictures. I had people from, from all various backgrounds that sent me their photos and asked me, Luana, can you be part of your, your campaign? And I, and I thought, oh my gosh, of course you can be part of my campaign. So I had them uh, send their headshots. And then, then you see, as you can see there on the screen, I mean, there were hundreds of them, a lot of them that came through and I was so blessed to have them part of my flyer campaign. So it was about everybody in general. I wanted everyone to be a part of it. And as you can see there, I was so blessed that they, they became a part of my uh, flyer campaign. So that was another thing that separated me from, from, from the incumbent. And I knew I had, I had to stand out in that manner because I'm the new kid on the block and you've got an incumbent that's been there over 24 years. So I knew we had to work really hard and I had an excellent campaign a marketing company that that did an, a wonderful job on my uh, campaign and connectworksgroup.com uh, they were just amazing so i take my hats off to owner craig Urasaki, did a great great job so i'm very blessed to have such awesome people in my corner to help push this campaign forward to make that thing stand out amongst any you know luana it, it's hard enough to get the larger larger population across the state of hawaii to vote in the Office of Hawaiian Affairs election, let alone for the trustee of the island of Molokai, uh -huh. when most people in our state don't live on Molokai and don't immediately recognize that they have a right and a responsibility to vote in the election of the Molokai trustee. How did you face that challenge? How did you get people uh, to see that voting for the Molokai trustee is something that should be put on their map? Well, um, for, for me, it was about you know, it's about education. So when you educate the public about OHA, because a lot of them didn't know about it, they didn't know they could vote. They thought they had to be from Molokai to vote. They thought they had to, uh, well, this is a Hawaiian thing, so they didn't want to be a part of it and so forth. So we had to ensure that um, we had to find a way to reach out to them. And, and that is through education. So through the flyers, through uh, emails, through uh, promotions and so forth, uh, in print work, we did in, in television commercials and so forth. We had to be able to do that, especially for people who understand that this is not just 
a Hawaiian thing. It's, it's a statewide election, obviously. So everybody's involved. Everybody can be a part of this. So we had to make sure that that was going to happen in part of our campaign and be, being able to do this. So as you can see, the reach was phenomenal. Our, our marketing company did the, uh, the numbers, they ran the, ag they ran the algorithms, and it just showed a huge, huge uh, separation between myself and my, uh, the incumbent. And so they were on track to promote the most incredible uh, uh, campaign um, for first time or ever. That was part of my uh, purpose in having to do the um, campaign. Well, you know, you obviously use technology and campaign strategies in order to get your point across. Yes. But, but how did you communicate to people who said, perhaps, oh, why should I vote in the OHA race? Because I'm not Hawaiian. What was your response to them? Well, it was, it was not necessarily because of the being you're not Hawaiian, but it is a duty that everyone has the opportunity to uh, vote in the OHA elections and not to ignore it because, you know, their vote helps, helps us. It helps us, helps the, uh, the new elected trustees to get into office. And we need everybody because this is a statewide election and everyone should be able to do that and not utilize, not use the uh, I'm not Hawaiian um, excuse because their vote matters to all of us. And without their vote, I, wouldn't, I know I probably wouldn't be here. So we want to ensure that uh, it does matter, that they do, they should consider being a part of this uh, election and not ignore it. So we had to, uh, you know, we had to think of ways in which we could not, a lot of it was, you know, meetings. Uh, uh, we had a lot of Zoom meetings and so forth, that was fine, but still comes down to their own preference. If they want to be involved or not, you can't force anybody to do that. So we wanted to be sure that at least we got our point across and it's up to them to be a, a participant in voting for OHA or not. That's the best we could do. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask Luana some questions about her goals, what she sees as the greatest needs of the Hawaiian people, how she hopes to tackle those. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this message. I'm Kili'i Akina on Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. My guest today is new trustee at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for the island of Molokai, Luana Alapa. Luana, we were talking a bit about your remarkable campaign that got you into office, but now that you're in office, your job begins. And it, it's important to be able to do something that makes a difference in the conditions of the Native Hawaiians. What do you think is the greatest need amongst Native Hawaiians today? For me, part of my campaign platform was about affordable housing. Uh, we still have a huge, long waiting list of Hawaiians uh, uh, on the uh, DHHL homestead uh, list. And I know as a, a, a beneficiary, because I already have, and very fortunate to have my own, to be able to live on Hawaiian homestead land and so forth. I know the value of that. Uh, it is a shame to see our people not able to uh, uh, have a roof over their heads and to enjoy at least the to begin to enjoy the quality of life that they so desperately need, and especially in their own ancestral land. So affordable housing to me is at the top of my list. Uh, and, and I've got to explore other ways in which we need to work with other entities, other uh, companies, other uh, partnerships that we could utilize so that our people have an opportunity. And I'm talking about 
moving this forward immediate, not in like 10 years from now, we're talking the next couple, maybe four or five years or less that we can make this happen. So I've been very blessed to have people coming to me after the election and talking to me about affordable housing. I think we'll talk about that and once we have our first board meeting, but uh, the affordable housing to me is vital for Hawaiian people because it begins to help them set up the quality of life, like I've said, for everyone. We're all, all deserving of living in beautiful, uh, our beautiful Hawaiian islands and to live the quality of life we're also deserving of. The second thing for me, of course, is about self-sustenance in agriculture. And I, and I live on ag land in, in Ho'olehua. And uh, the pandemic was a perfect example of how much we rely on outside sources to, to survive. And it shouldn't be like that. You know, I mean, the Hawaiians of old, they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't survive with anyone else. They survived within themselves and within their own lands that they were able to, to hunt and fish and so forth. We, it's not like we can do that. Not everyone has the opportunity to hunt and fish. I know in Molokai, we do a lot of that, but not everyone can do it. So we have to find other ways to, uh, to uh, sustain our lives. We have a lot of land that needs to be developed, but guess what? It takes money. And I can't even develop my father's uh, Ho'olehua agriculture lot because it takes money to, that, to do that. So, you know, you've got to go through grants and other forms in order for us to get our agricultural uh, lot up and running and the things that we have planned there. So if we become an example of that, all of our Hawaiian people who are fortunate to live on agricultural land can do the same thing too. But it does take a little bit of knowledge and know-how and to also educate our Hawaiian people. So they too, those that are fortunate to, enough to have an agricultural lot, they too can begin to, uh, uh, to develop their own self-sustenance, not just for themselves and their family, but for all of their community as well. So two things. Well, obviously, yes. obviously, Luana, across the Hawaiian islands, Hawaiians are in need of housing as Absolutely. well as economic development. But on your island in particular, Molokai, with the economic situation there and its impact upon social demographics, what are, what are some unique problems to Molokai residents that you might address as a NOHA trustee? Well, um, one of the, it's, it's not unique because it's been around for, for so long, jobs. Uh, there's a lack of jobs opportunity there. Uh, there really isn't anything. Tourism is pretty much out the door because of COVID and so forth. But even before COVID hit, it was still at the bottom. Uh, so they, they really didn't have much. I mean, almost 90% of the island is on state assistance. So how are we going to turn that around? You know, it's going to be very difficult. Even if we were to introduce some form of tourism, it has to be more of a control type. So that, let's say, for example, we bring in groups uh, to come into Molokai and they spend the day there and we'll take them throughout to, uh, to experience and to, to see what we do as Hawaiians as we live, just visit the old fishing ponds, to go and hike up into Halava Valley and so forth. At the end of the day, we fly them back out and they go back to their hotels on, on, on Oahu, wherever they came from. So, you know, there's, there's that, but you still need support from the, um, from Islanders. They are so in dire need and wanting uh, to work and to live on Molokai instead of uh, moving away and never coming back. And so, and those that do come back like me, for example, but I came back for a reason um, is because uh, they want to live the rest of their lives in the beautiful Molokai, but then you also need to live to survive. You need to, uh, uh, you need to, uh, your, your monies, you need to survive in a way that you can feed yourself and so forth and not rely on outside sources. So we have a work cut out and, and on Molokai, it truly is about jobs. They need it badly there. When you ran for office, one of the planks you ran on was greater transparency and accountability at the Office yes. of Hawaiian Affairs. Yes. What is your thought as to some of the things that the OHA trustee board needs to deal with as you come on board? In your first term. Well, I, I think first of all, you know, you have a new energy. Uh, myself, I, I guess I am the new kid on the block, and I, I we also have the uh, big island, right? Uh, Keola, mm -hmm. Lindsay, yeah, he's going to be coming in board. So when you're dealing with a with a new energy, that means the personalities. You have nine different personalities on the board, and everybody has their own mindset of of what they see, what they like. You know, different personality types and so forth. It's all about first of all is about uh, getting to know each other. And that's how it should be, because to me, it's like a team and it's working together for the common goal of working towards the betterment of our Hawaiian people. And every day that we meet, we have to make sure that we have come to the terms that by the end of this meeting, that we've come closer to the goal of, of reaching that, whether, whether it's going to be on the topic of affordable housing, jobs, education, whatever it may be. But we have to have that in mind so that at the end of our meeting, we can feel good. We can go home and sleep good at night, knowing we've come this much closer 
to our goals as a whole. When, when people see that you have a, a board of trustees that are very close knit, uh, they, they've worked out their differences because it's not about the I, it's about the we, and it's about everybody and, and, and us serving them. They have to keep that in mind. For me, that's my mantra. It's about service to others constantly. Nothing else should supersede that. So when, when people talk about, oh, the audit and, and uh, we need to see the numbers and so forth, sure, of course, there shouldn't be any reason why we would hold that back because this is what? A state-funded public agency, correct? So now we want to make sure that everyone knows that we're all on the same page and this is what's going on and so forth. So they feel confident and comfortable knowing that we as trustees have their best interests at hand and not our personal interests. Some issues are not too difficult to deal with. And I think we're all very glad that recently the Office of Hawaiian Affairs Trustees set aside a large amount of money to help Hawaiians with the COVID virus. And that's an easy win, I think, for the Hawaiian people and an easy decision for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to make. But there are also other issues that are controversial and they're very difficult to deal with. For example, what to do about the 30 meter telescope on Mount Akea. What are your thoughts as to how to approach an issue like that? That, that hit me from the very start when I first been exposed to these types of situations in regards to issues of Hawaiian matters and so forth. And the TMT was number one. And uh, being a, a newcomer and so forth, especially in this arena, because, you know, this is not something I do every day, but I had to quickly learn and be educated. And uh, I, I, I spoke with many uh, folks, especially some of the women. I, I, I've been so blessed to have powerful women in the Hawaiian community supporting me and backing me and educating me on TMT issues and so forth. It's not necessarily the TMT issue itself, the building. and the, It's really about what took place prior to that. And if you understand the LNR and, and University of Hawaii, and they, have, they were the caretakers of Mauna Kea, so a lot of things got messed up in between, if you will. And, and people were, were tired of seeing uh, the things that we support from our, the education up there, our cultural aspect. We all have to have respect for that because we were here first, right? This is our land. This is our place. But we need to also have the people show respect for that. And I think that's what was lacking and what, what gave us less confidence in those that were uh, handling the Mauna Kea issues. So the other part is outside of that is being able to bring two groups together. Perhaps OHA should have had a, play, a, 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 a bigger part in it and not just allow uh, the LNR and uh, UH to just do their thing. We wanted, we should have been there from the beginning to ensure that everything was being followed accordingly to protocol and so forth. But obviously it, it hasn't happened. And now you have this, this huge foray of, of uh, people from all over the world uh, contributing their thoughts and energies to it, negative or positive. And now you have divisiveness and it should never have been like that in the first place if everything was done accordingly from the very beginning. But unfortunately, it hasn't happened like that. I mean, I personally do not have the power to change anything. Uh, it, it does take people like a board, for example, to put to give their input. But at the same time, you also have to keep, to keep in mind about the people first, period. And when we do that, um, I, I think we're going to have a little... Uh, things will just ease up a bit and we'll be able to come back to the bargaining table and talk more intelligently of what's going to be best for uh, Mauna Kea. Luana, we've come to the end of our program and I have about a minute left. I'd like to ask you to tell us what the Luana factor will be. What does Luana Alapa bring to the table with her eight other colleagues uh, on trustee board? Well, let, let's put it this way. Uh, as, as an Aries, that's me, uh, I'm, I can give you all the things about my, myself. Uh, I, I'm, you're gonna see a lot of the positivity, which is so important uh, is today, especially. You know, we, we've gone through a very tough uh, seven, eight months with the COVID and a lot of unhappiness has been out there, especially when people are losing jobs and so forth, uh, personal situations at home. But for me, um, it is all about focusing on the, on the positives. So when I come into the room, it's always gonna be greeted with a, with a wonderful aloha, how are you, good morning. You know, you wanna always start things off on a positive note. So you get a lot of that. Energy is important to me because energy is what, what gives us the opportunity to move forward in, in a positive way. I know there'll be some negatives and so forth, we can get through that, but we always have to look at everything from a positive light and it is it's going to serve our people first and foremost. That to me is gonna be an important matter as an OHA trustee. Well, you certainly have a great deal of positivity and energy and it's full of aloha. I wanna thank you, Luana, for joining us today. 
and I want to congratulate you on becoming a trustee of the Office of Wine. I'm Day. excited. I'll see you on the board. Huh? <laughs> Look forward to it. You have a great Thanksgiving and holiday season. And Happy uh, Thanksgiving to you too. And everyone there at ThinkTech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. And to all of you viewing this holiday season, we wish the best to you and your ohana. Stay safe during the COVID crisis. Uh, make wise decisions. And remember that the Aloha spirit covers all things. Until next time, I'm Kili'i Akina on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.